We have charges like electrons, 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 with a force which is enormous. Hey there, Kamustaka. How's it going? Welcome to the Electronics Lab. This equation that we've got here is for the capacitance of a parallel plate capacitor. And the capacitance of a parallel plate capacitor is completely determined by the physical characteristics of the capacitor. This equation is showing that the capacitance is equal to the permittivity times the area, the cross-sectional area of the parallel plates, divided by the distance between the plates. And in this video, I want to give you a good intuitive sense of why these particular parameters are, contribute to the, to the capacitance of a capacitor. So let's start with area because that's probably the easiest one to understand. So just in general, from that equation, we know capacitance is proportional to area. So that means if the area goes up, then the capacitance goes up and vice versa. Now to think about why this is the case, let's remember, well actually let's go back to the definition of capacitance. Capacitance is the capacity or the capability of storing charge per applied volt uh, to, that, to the parallel plates. So to increase the capacitance, you can increase the capability of holding charge. So that area, if we look at like a really simple diagram of the parallel plates, we've got a top plate and a bottom plate there. Now when, the, when charge, when a voltage is applied to these plates, let's say positive at the top and negative at the bottom, there'll be charge that builds up on those plates. Basically what's gonna happen is electrons are going to come in. So the electrons will come in the bottom and then electrons will leave at the top, leaving, leaving positive charge at the top on the top plates. Now, if we were to increase the size of those plates, there is now more room for charges. So with the same amount of push, you can get more charges onto the plates because there's more space for them. So that's why increasing the area of the parallel plates will increase the capacitance of the capacitor. Now let's look at distance. So capacitance is proportional to the inverse of distance. So that means if the distance between the plates decreases, then the capacitance will increase. So this time when we're looking at these parallel plates, let's look at a cross-sectional view. And we've got the same positive and negative charges connected over here to the parallel plates, the capacitor. Electrons move on to the plate and for every electron that comes onto the plate, it pushes an electron away from the top plate, leaving positive charge at the top plate. Now, what happens when we reduce the gap? So we're going to reduce the gap between these two plates, but we're not going to change the voltage that's applied. That voltage stays the same, distance is decreasing. So now, the, when electrons come onto the plate here, the force that they have is going to be greater than the force over here because the distance between the charges, the distance between the two plates is now less. So we've got electrons coming into the plate here that's pushing electrons away from this top plate. But because they're closer, the, they're, there's more force pushing even more electrons away. So more electrons go away, that's leaving positive here and allowing electrons to build up on the bottom plate, meaning that more charges can build up on these two plates because the distance has decreased. The distance between the plates has decreased. So that's why when you decrease the distance between the plates, the capacitance increases. Now finally, let's take a look at permittivity. And permittivity, or capacitance, is proportional to permittivity. So as permittivity goes up, so does capacitance. But to understand why this is the case, we, we really need to understand what permittivity is. And really all permittivity is, is, is the capability to be polarized. So in between these parallel plates, and again, I'm going to draw a cross section of them, needs to be some kind of, of insulator. We don't want any charge flowing across the plates. It needs to be an insulator there for charges to build up on the two plates. So the nature of that insulator is what determines the permittivity. And, and the nature of the insulator, the nature of the permittivity determines is determined by how polarizable the material in between the plates are. So before we jump into what's happening between the plates, let's just take a look at, at a molecule. So this mole a molecule is going to have some amount of positive and some amount of negative charge in it. 
and those negative charges come from the electrons, and the flow of electrons is what leads to current. But in an insulator, those electrons are held onto very tightly by the, by the insulator. However, if you apply an E field with some external positive and negative charges there, what's going to happen is in this molecule, those charges are going to get distributed. The, the electron is going to stay held on to, uh, the molecule is going to hold on to that electron, but it's going to be distributed through the molecule differently. So what's going to happen is the negative of the molecule is going to be pulled towards the positive side of the E field, and the positive in the molecule is going to be pulled towards the negative side of the E field. And so what you're going to get is kind of an internal E field in each one of these molecules that's opposing the external E field that's applied. So over here in the, change colors, over here inside of the capacitor, inside this dielectric, what you're going to get is when you have applied, when you have the positive and the negative voltage, you're going to be creating an, e an external E field. But then the polarizability of the material inside is going to cause all of these little internal E fields that are all going to be negative, positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, and there's going to be you know, a whole bunch of those throughout the, throughout the insulator. And because we have, if we look at down here, we've got positive there, negative there, positive, negative, the external, the internal E field of the dielectric is going to pull more, is going to pull more electrons to the plate. So we already have some buildup of electrons there, but because we've got this internal E field from the from the dielectric, that positive that's that's positive from the dielectric that's close to the negative side of the plate is going to pull more electrons into the plate. And simultaneously, the negative side on the negatives on this side of the dielectric are going to push more E negatives away from the plate. So you're going to get a lot more buildup of charge because of those internal electric fields created by the, by the polarized dielectric. A couple more things to note about this permittivity. So permittivity is given as a single number, but quite often we think about it in terms of two different numbers. We think of it in terms of an epsilon naught, which is kind of like the base permittivity, and an epsilon r, which is kind of like the relative permittivity. So this epsilon naught is called the vacuum permittivity or sometimes the permittivity of free space. And it's equal to a fairly small number. 8.854 times 10 to the minus 12, and its units are farads per meter. So if the material in between here was simply a vacuum, then the permittivity would be epsilon naught. 8.85 times 10 to the minus 12 farads per meter. However, if the material inside is some other kind of dielectric, whether that's air, or, or a ceramic or some kind of exotic material, the epsilon r is going to increase the value. So epsilon r is the relative multiplier. So for example, epsilon r, the relative permittivity for some different materials. Well, for a vacuum, it's one. For air, it's a little bit more, 1.006. If you put in a mica, depending on its exact nature is going to be somewhere between three and six. You put in polystyrene, you get somewhere around 2.6. So these are fairly small multipliers so far. So you can get a, a capacitance that's a little bit bigger if you're using air instead of a vacuum, or if you're using mica or polystyrene in between instead of a vacuum or instead of air. But you can, there are more exotic materials. Barium titanate is an example. And it's a, it's a ceramic and inorganic material. And depending on how it's made up, it can have a relative permittivity from 1,200 to about 10,000. So by using one of these materials, one of these special materials with a really high permittivity, so that can means it can be really, it's very polarizable, then you can get a much higher capacitance than if you just had air or one of, one of these more common materials. All right, to wrap up, I just want to throw a couple of examples at you of calculating the capacitance, knowing the permittivity, the area, and the distance between the, the plates. So if I have, let's say I've got a, a cross-sectional area, or an overlapping area, I should say, of 0 0.1 meters, 
a distance in between the plates of two millimeters and a relative permittivity of 1.006 because I've got an air gap. This is an air gap capacitor. So then my capacitance is going to be 1.006. Then I need to multiply by the permittivity in the vacuum. So that's 8.854 times 10 to the minus 12 farads per meter. Then multiply by the overlapping area, 0.1 meters, well, 0.1 meters squared. And then all divided by the distance between them. That's in millimeters there. I need to convert that to meters. So 0 0.002 meters. 4.45 times 10 to the minus 10 farads. One more example. Okay, so here we've got parallel plates. 7 centimeters by 7 centimeters, and the distance between is 1 millimeter. We're using this barium titanate with an epsilon r of 9,000. So the capacitance will be equal to epsilon naught times epsilon r, that gives me epsilon, times the area divided by the distance. So this will be 8.854 times 10 to the minus 12 farads per meter times 9,000 for the relative permittivity. Time, 7 centimeters by 7 centimeters, so that's 0 0.07 meters by 0 0.07 meters. And then all divided by 1 millimeter, but I need that in meters, so 0 0.001. And that works out to 3.9 times 10 to the minus 7 farads. So that's it. You should now know why capacitance depends on the permittivity of the material between the plates, the overlapping area of the plates, and the distance between the plates. Right on. As always, thank you so much for watching. See you next time.